Oh boy, look what just arrived on the front porch. It's a whole new batch of corals. And they're just for me. Get ready for unboxing. Hi everybody, John here with another FinCast. And today I want to show you the unboxing of a mother load of corals from Carolina Aquatics. Talk about instant gratification. I was so happy when I came home and our wholesale shipment from Carolina Aquatics was there, including a box of corals that the owner, Chris Klein, sent just for me. Now, I like buying frags and getting some rare corals in the aquarium, but, but since Carolina Aquatics is a wholesaler, I was able to obtain some nice colonies of coral and in this case, the owner, Chris Klein, who is one of my go-to people for aquarium advice, hooked me up with some massive pieces that really gave the aquarium a more mature look, not to mention some amazing color. So if you like what you're seeing here, I would encourage you to talk to your local fish store and ask them if they have an account with Carolina Aquatics. And if they don't, maybe they want to set one up because they really do a nice job. And I think you'll see that as we go through this process. So now let's get to the unboxing. Okay, let's see what we got here. Oh man, that's heavy. Look at that. That is a bunch of corals. <clears throat> These are really well done. Looks like a big lobo, lobophilia. It's like a favia, toadstool leather. Holy crap, look at the size of that coral. After a bit of acclimation, my son Ben of Carlin Aquarium Systems and I set about placing the corals and getting really a first good look at them. So that is a, look at that. <laughs> That is huge. It's a green bower banky. And for now, I'm just gonna set it over here. I'm gonna put it down on the substrate. I'm, I'm... Are you kidding me? Look at that. It's nuts. That is a colony right there. I just think for scale. Like... I mean, that is, it's so hard when you're decorating the corners to make something really work, but I mean, that right there just created its its own section of the aquarium. Lobophilia. During this time, we were really impressed with the care that Carolina Aquatics used in packing these colonies. And this is also when we got our best look at the corals. Now, of course, corals look so much better under aquarium lighting as opposed to room lighting. There's nothing like a little blue light to see the corals at their best. Now, I've been playing with the light mixture and I'm going for a color temperature of about 12K in this tank, which is where I think that both the fish and the corals look their best. Now I unpacked what might be my favorite from this shipment. This was an almost dinner plate sized Bauer Banky coral. These are a species of Acan and they like medium light and medium flow. I chose a spot that offered both and it just so happened to secure a great visual niche on the right side of this six-foot aquarium. Acanthophilia here. If the Bauer Banky isn't my favorite, then it's this Acanthophilia. I couldn't believe how beautiful it was under the tank lights. Now, these are not fussy about lighting. Medium light will do. And I'll actually be moving this to a lower flow area because they don't like a lot of flow. However, based upon what I know about this coral, I think it's going to get a lot larger over time in the tank, and this is an expensive coral. I could see this retailing for over $500. I got a sweet looking scoli here. Now coming in after those two corals, if that's possible, was this scolemia coral. Oh man, even not even in the water, you can see all the color coming off of them. This one sports at least three colors with orange and green stripes on a brown background and some speckles in there too. And I wanted this coral to be in an obvious place in the aquarium, but I also needed to keep in mind its preference for low to medium lighting and relatively low flow. It's doing great so far. Caroline Aquatics sent me two different lobophilia brain corals and both have at least three colors and one has bright green centers and these two corals are now a focal point in the middle of the aquarium. 
These corals are also not fussy about light and flow, and they do tolerate a variety of water conditions. Big, long polyp toadstool leather. Now, I haven't kept leather corals for years, but when Chris offered a large toadstool, I couldn't pass it up. Now, leathers are relatively easy to keep, but they can be tricky because they give off toxins. It's basically their way of protecting their spot on the reef. And I actually use Chemipure Blue in my sump, and that helps remove those from the water. Now, this was a really nice specimen. All the tentacles were retracted after travel and packaging, but by the next day, this coral was doing great. Now, believe it or not, I've never had much success keeping clove polyps, which is kind of crazy because it's considered a beginner coral. Carolina Aquatics putting it in the bag to be protected so it doesn't move during shipping is just good attention to detail. So I'll need to be more diligent in my placement and care and attention to this nice uh, colony. As I said, it's considered an easy coral. It's recommended for beginners and this particular colony has beautiful fluorescent green centers and they're among the most beautiful I've ever seen in fact. Uh, this coral, the clove or glove polyp, it's got many other names, palm tree, uh, these can be invasive and take over uh, an area of the tank. I actually hope that happens here so keep your fingers crossed. This is a fabia here. Another of my favorites in this shipment is a, a sort of mint green favia. This one's about hand sized and although it's hard to see in the video, it has peachy colored centers. The favia are also known as pineapple corals and they can extend sweeper tentacles at night so I'll need to be careful that this one doesn't sting anything nearby when I'm not watching. And then finally we unbox two species of Pacific Gorgonians, and these are the non-photosynthetic type, which means I'll need to feed them. Now they're beautiful with bright white polyps on yellow or red branching arms. These are like high flow areas, so the polyps can grab micronutrients from the current. And I've already noticed that the ones that are in the current look much happier than those placed in other parts of the aquarium, so it looks like I have a little coral replanting to do. For the record, I'll do my best with these and hope that they aren't too demanding. I uh, talked to Chris about them a little bit, and he said if you feed frozen food, which typically you put uh, in water and then dump the water in the aquarium, he says there's a lot of uh, micro particles in that water, and they will feed on those. So hopefully that'll, that'll work out. I hope you enjoyed watching this uh, as much as I did, the unboxing. Of course, I get to keep the corals, so maybe, maybe I enjoyed it just a little bit more. But it is fun. It's suspenseful. I've been to Chris's facility down in North Carolina on uh, multiple t uh, occasions, and I usually handpick the corals that'll go in our clients' aquariums, or sometimes we'll frag them um, and, and distribute them to uh, help offset the cost of the aquariums at Center in the Square, which are beautiful uh, here in Roanoke, Virginia. But um, this time, of course, I just talked to Chris on the phone, so there was that suspense about what these corals would look like and, and exactly how they were going to appear in the aquarium. And I got to say that in terms of size, in terms, in terms of color or both, uh, each coral that Chris had described to me on the telephone um, outdistanced the expectations I had for them. So this was obviously uh, a very pleasurable experience for me. Now, having seen the facility and talked to Chris many times uh, in person there and, and also at trade shows, I can vouch for the quality and the knowledge. We bought fish from him, we bought corals from them. Uh, I've been there when his imports have arrived from Australia. And really, this is a first class organization and I don't mind at all saying that. The end result of all of that, of course, is that these corals uh, are handled as well as they can be handled through the shipment process, through the holding process, and then the shipment to your retailer. And so these corals have an excellent chance of ultimately surviving and thriving in your home aquarium. So once again, if you have a local fish store, I would encourage you to talk to them and ask them if they have a relationship with Carolina Aquatics. And if they don't, Tell them that you've seen this video and recommend that they contact Chris Klein and, uh, and perhaps set up a business relationship between the store and Chris, who is a wholesaler. And all the information will be placed in the description with this video down below. 
So let's take another look at the corals in my 180 build while I remind you to please subscribe to FinCasters. Also, please consider liking the FinCasters Facebook page. Check out my photos on Instagram, my blog at FinCasters.com. There are also videos there. And I've also started a Facebook group where we can share pictures of our aquariums and share information and opinions about aquarium keeping. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next FinCast.